Hey there everybody, I'm back today with a comparing video, this time between the Let It Be album and the Let It Be Anniversary Edition album. So this will be an Anniversary Edition comparison video. Now anyways, um, the Let It Be Anniversary Edition albums I got for Christmas um, of last year and and I have another Let It Be album which I will show off the... This is actually this this is actually my second copy of the Let It Be album. This is the original one I have right here, so I'm gonna show it. Um, this one I bought a f um a few years ago. Um, when I was at college, I bought this at a record store, and I've had this for a few years. That one I got for Christmas. Same with the rest of the records, which I will show off in a little bit. This one comes with four records. You got the original Let It Be album. Or the original Let It Be record, sorry. The Get Back record with the Apple Sessions, Rehearsals, and Apple Jams. The original Beatles Get Back album with with um, Get with Don't Let Me Down and 12 other songs, which this is the same basis as Please Please Me. And then these are the, and then this is the Apple rec, Let It Be record of um, the, what's it called? Let me look. This is the this is the Let, Let It Be EP of the original versions. And then there's another Let It Be album out there, which is um, Let It Be Naked, which that album was released in 2003. That album has um, all original songs without Phil Spector's edits. Because Let It Be has Phil Spector's edits. These ones in Let It Be Naked are all original. There's no Phil Spector edits. And also, this this album, or record, excuse me, came with a book right there, and it talks about the whole documentary of Let It Be, and it came in that case right there, so yeah, just thought I'd give a little brief history about it, now on to compare it, this one is about the same length as this one, and it has one record inside it, this one has two records inside it, since it opens up like a book, it's a double record, and this one shows the pictures of the Beatles, Get Back Recording Sessions, later retitled Let It Be. And that book also has, that book has a documentary of the recording sessions, I forgot to mention, it's all the recording sessions, the rooftop concert, and the, um, the, one, and the movie Let It Be, which there's also pictures of the recording sessions, pictures of the Beatles themselves, and the rooftop concert, which is right here. Yeah, and... The Let It Be movie, I've seen it actually, um, that movie got a lot of mixed reviews because, um, for one, um, that movie has, um, I'm trying to think, like for a majority of the movie until the end, um, that movie has like pretty much the Beatles members recording songs and like arguing with one another because... Because from the White Album until Abbey Road, the Beatles were getting into tensions with each other. Like, there were frequent arguments. Um, in fact, during the White Album sessions in 1968, um, Ringo Starr temporarily quit the band. Because he kept getting criticized by Paul McCartney during the recording session of Back in the USSR. And Paul McCartney had to take over drums for Back in the USSR and Dear Prudence. And then for Let It Be, George Harrison temporarily quit because um, he got into a heated argument with Paul McCartney during the recording session of Two of Us, which that was shown in the movie. And then what's not shown in the movie is he got into a much more severe argument and had a fallout with John Lennon. Because um, Harrison was fed up with Lennon's creative and disengagement and... Um, and he berated John Lennon for not contributing anything positive to the recording sessions. And he also berated him for saying Apple Corpse was in ruins. And Paul McCartney had to take over guitar, re guitar for the recording sessions for um, Watching Rainbows and Madman, which are two unreleased Beatles songs that were recorded during that session. But anyways, just thought I'd give another history lesson about that. And anyways, um, this record right here, same as these two, just comes with one record because it's a 2LP. This one's a 4LP. 
which in total per game is a 5 LP. And then this record, the original one that I bought separately, that's also a 2 LP. Same length as these ones, same record as that. And the back of this shows the Beatles song, the Beatles Maris himself, and some of the songs right there. So I will show the songs right here. Sorry if you can't read that. The light's just bright in here. I don't know why. But I'll bring it in over here. Sorry if my shadow's in my way, but that's the easier... I'm just move, I'm moving my shadow here so that you can read this. And if you want, you can pause to take a look. Because my light is just so bright in this room. I don't know why. But anyways, yeah. And then I'm not going to show the back side of this album because... This record, excuse me, because um, I've already showed this off in a separate comparing video. So I won't show that off. And then this one, there, it doesn't show the song listing on the back of this one. It's just a blank sleeve with the word Apple on it. Only the songs are on the record. And then this one I'll show off. Um, this, the, co the album cover for Get Back. Um, it's, it's the same cover as um, the Red Album, Blue Album, and Please Please Me. Like the Beatles are in the same plaza. Only differences on Please Please Me and the Red Album, they're younger and in their early 20s. On this rec album cover um, and the Blue Album, they're in their mid to late 20s. That's why they look different because they've changed well over the years. And then this is the track listing on the back. And... Um, they actually recently released the, the Get Back documentary on Disney+, Plus, which I haven't watched it, but I'm going to eventually, because I'm really interested in seeing it. And it credits the Beatles members. And, um, I don't know why this one does, and I don't know why this one doesn't say it, but this one actually credits... This record credits Billy Preston, a um, keyboardist, which he played keyboard and organ during the Let It Be recording sessions. And, and it gives a special thanks to him. And Billy Preston also performed with the Beatles on the rooftops, which he played keyboard. Yeah, because Billy Preston was a keyboardist. And anyways, I'm going to show the records. I'm not going to show the Let It Be record since I've already shown that in previous videos. So I'm not going to show that because it's it's because um, it's actually the same thing as the original, the, the newer one I have. So I'm just going to show the records for the other ones. Because obviously for, for Let It Be, you've already seen the record in another video. So I'm not going to show it because it's just the same thing. I'll show the box, though. That's where all the records go. In this box right here, which I'm going to bring over. It's about the same length as the, um, the box for the White Album Anniversary Edition and Abbey Road. And um, the Let It Be Anniversary Edition album was released last year. Um, it's the fourth Beatles album to get an Anniversary Edition. The first Beatles album to get it was Sgt. Pepper's. That was released back in 2017. The White Album was the second album to get an anniversary edition. That was released back in 2018. Abbey Road was the third record to get... I mean, album, sorry. To get an anniversary edition. That was released back in 2019. And then Let It Be was released last year. And it came up on 50 years. It's crazy. Speaking of anniversary edition albums, um, there's also a couple other albums that got an anniversary edition on... John Lennon's album, Imagine, came up on 50 years. That has an anniversary edition. George Harrison's album, All Things Must Pass, has an anniversary edition, because that also came up on 50 years. And then a Rolling Stones record came up on 50 years. Um, I don't know the name off the top of my head, but I know it came up on 50 years. And then another album I know off the top of the head, my head that came up on 50 years is... Um, I mean, sorry, not 50 years, 20 years, excuse me. Um, pardon me for saying that. An album that came up on 20 years just... 
and uh, in 2020, um, and uh, the album that came up on 20 years, which happened in, which was really, which happened in 2020, was um, Linkin Park's first album, um, Hybrid Theory. Hybrid Theory came up on 20 years in 2020, and um, and it got an anniversary edition album record and. Hybrid Theory was originally released in 2000, and it came up on 20 years that year, which is just crazy. Light It Be was originally released in 1970. Sard, um, Sgt. Pepper's was originally released in 1967. Um, the White Album was originally released in 1968. Abbey Road was originally released in 1969. So another history I thought I'd give, for those who don't know. Because I do like giving history lessons. And another fun fact, and a fun fact about me, um, I actually, um, I actually studied history when I was in college. As my concentration for liberal and professional studies. Just thought I'd give you all a fun fact. Just because I have a fun, I just have a, a fun, a really fun interest in history. Because that's why I get some history lessons in videos, so... That's just thought I'd give you a little fun fact, and I actually got my degree, my bachelor's degree in liberal and professional studies with a concentration of history last year because I graduated from college. So yeah, I just thought I'd give some fun facts about me. So yeah, anyways, um, back on the video, or back to the video recording, I should say. Here is side one of the Get Back album, the Apple Sessions one, this is a different one. The get the the um, let it be the original um, the let it be album that has all of the songs that were edited by Phil Spector. That's why let it be was produced by Phil Spector. And let it be is the only album to not be produced by George Martin. It was produced by um, Phil Spector because Phil Spector um, edited all those songs. And uh, I'm trying to think what else to say. And from Please Please Me to Abbey Road, George Martin produced all those albums. So yeah. The Get Back Apple Sessions has all the songs, the number of takes, some speeches, and some recording sessions for the takes. Here's side one. And this record's black, obviously. Same with the other ones. Side two. And now I'll show you this one. Uh, side three and four, which I'm gonna pull that out right now. The sleeves are the same length and same color. They're black. Records the same length. They're black. These ones, the Apple logo is a lot similar to the White Album Anniversary Edition. It's the same Apple. It's white right there. Same one. It's the same one as the White Album Anniversary Edition um, for the Escher demos. Or yeah, this is side. Uh, Wait. Here's side one and side two. Okay, I don't I don't know why this these ones don't say side three and four, but that's kind of weird. This is the first record I've came across where it doesn't say side three and four for, for the other record. Because if it's a double LP, usually it says sides one and two, then three and four. I don't know why that is, but that's just kind of strange. But anyways, minus that flaw, this is actually still a good record. So yeah, just thought I'd show you those two sides. Alright. Sorry if I put my hand in the way. Alright, and then the next one I'm going to show, or last one I'm going to show, or wait, not, not the last one, the next one. I'll show the record for the Get Back one. I showed the recording sessions one. Now I gotta show the original get back one. Sorry, I gotta set my camera down because this record will not come out. It's hard to do this one handed, you know. <laughs> okay. This is the Glint Get Back Glenn Johns mix um, record. It's got the same green apple as the uh, original Let It Be record does. Anyways, I thought I'd show side one. And this one has the saw, the um, saw, the Glenn. This one has the Glenn Johns mix songs. The other one I looked at has the um, recording session ones. 
because Glenn Johns did the mixing for the for the Get Back album, and not George Martin, and then Phil Spector, and then Phil Spector, John Lennon, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr did the mixing for the revised Let It Be album. Paul McCartney did not take part in it because he was out of the country. And another fun fact about that, when Let It Be was revisited, um, when when Let It Be was re-recorded, um, only Ringo Starr played on the re-recordings. And Ringo Starr listened to the original Let It Be recordings, and he matched his drumming as best as he could. And Ringo Starr play, did, did both the mixing and play on the re-recorded versions. And he matched his drumming to the original as best he could. And Paul McCartney did not take part in any of this. It was only John Lennon, George Harrison, Ringo Starr, and Phil Spector. Which, speaking of Phil Spector, um, Phil Spector died last year in April from COVID. Which is definitely a tragic. Rest in peace, Phil Spector. And then the last record I gotta look at is the um, what's it called? Pull on, I gotta pull it out. Where did I put it? It's the last record I gotta show. Oh, here it is. It is the Let It Be EP record. Last one I'm gonna show, and then I'll end the video. Because um, I would show the book, but I don't want to make this video too long, so I will show that in another video. So yeah, just gotta point that out. I'll. Sh I'll go in full detail. I'll do a full detailed review on that book in another video, just not this one. Just because I don't want to make it too long. Okay, this is side one. It's got the same apple as the Get Back record and the Let It Be record that I bought from the record store. That was released in 1970. Side one. Okay, sorry, I'm trying to I'm trying to get a better sorry my shadows in the way. Just trying to show you this. I do apologize if my shadows in the way or if it's bright. Alright, that's side two. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this comparing video. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.